Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, February 12th, 2016. I am Dave Biddle, and I am joined by Alex Gleitman. Alex, good morning to you, sir, from Columbus. How are things in the Big Apple? Oh, uh, they're good. Getting cold this weekend, but uh, ready for the Buckeyes to roll into town and uh, head down to uh, Rutgers for a little basketball in what, in what should be a Buckeye win, but, you know, this season you can't take anything for granted. That's going to be bitter cold here this weekend, too, in the capital city, but at least not getting any snow or anything. It's just going to be really cold. But uh, a big debate on our board, and probably across Buckeye Nation, is how many recruits Ohio State will take in its 2017 recruiting class. The Buckeyes already have 11 commitments in the class. Of course, Alex, they are ranked as the number one class in the country, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite, by a wide margin. And they have scholarship offers out to many other prospects. Alex, 11 months and three weeks, roughly, from uh, signing day. As we sit here right now, how many recruits do you think will be in Ohio State's 2017 class? Well, Dave, right now I think there are about five or six oversigned already for the class. I mean, they have very few seniors leaving next year. But at the same time, as we've discussed before, I think, you know, you're going to have some guys transfer. Uh, you're probably going to have some uh, what, will, what would be uh, fifth year seniors um, potentially not be asked back for that fifth year. Uh, similar to, you know, a, a Warren Ball situation um, from this year. Um, and, you know, you, you might have uh, a couple situations where, um, you know, just, just other things happen with attrition and um, roster management, I guess we could call it, um, just to clear some room. So, obviously, they're not only going to be able to sign six guys. They're not only going to be able to sign 11 guys. I think the number they're kind of working with now is 18. I think they're working in that 18 to 20 range. So I, that would kind of be my guess right now. I don't think it's going to be any more than 20. I know people say every year, oh, they sign 25 every year. They'll find a way. But honestly, I just I really don't see how it's going to happen. I mean, as I said, injuries, transfers, not asking guys back for a fifth year, things of that nature will happen. But that's going to be – I mean, you're asking for – if you're asking for anything more than 20, you're asking for that to happen to 15 or more guys uh, or 14 or more guys. So, you know, I, I just don't see that happening. So 18 to 20 is my number. All right, here's my take. So each of the five seasons Urban Meyer has been at Ohio State, the Buckeyes have signed at least 23 recruits. And that includes the first three years when they only had a total of 82 scholarships to give out because of the sanctions that Coach Meyer had inherited. And you touched on that a little bit. And I'm not predicting that the Buckeyes will be able to sign 23 again, but I definitely think they'll get to at least 20. And it won't surprise me to see 22 or 23 by the time it's all said and done. And one thing I think that's very important to point out, we're not talking about, and you know this, but I just mean to the listeners, we're talking about fall camp of 2017, so a year and a half from now. To say a lot's going to change between now and then is an understatement. You're talking about guys that transfer, you know, guys that are just done playing football, guys that have medical issues, guys that have off-the-field issues, just a myriad of things that are going to happen, guys leaving early for the pros. We're talking fall camp of 2017. I think if Urban Meyer wants to get 23 in this class, he will get 23 in this class. I'm saying at least 20 as many as 22 or 23, your reaction? Yeah, I mean, you know, listen, I'm, I'm going off kind of some intel that I get from people that are involved in the situation and, and know what's going on. And, and this past year, you know, at, at this time, they were telling me they'd probably work in anywhere from the numbers of 21 to 23, and they ended up signing 25. So, you know, it, you could be right. I mean, they're saying 18 to 20. It could end up being 20 to 22 or 23. Um, you know, you got Raekwon McMillan, who's probably going to leave early. Taekwon Lewis could leave early. Sam Hubbard could leave early. Heck, Ma- Malcolm Prigion could come in, have a monster year at left or right tackle for Ohio State and leave after one year. I mean, it's certainly possible. So a, a lot of things could happen um, for Ohio State to get some extra scholarships. But, again, as I said, right now I think they had room for, for six without anyone leaving early, transferring, et cetera. So to get to 22 or 23, that's 16 or 17 additional people that would have to move on from the program before fall camp of 2017, and that's just a lot to me. Switching gears, 
14 Ohio State players were invited to the NFL Combine yesterday, which is a new record. You did a story for the site on this, Alex. And of the 14, all of them are locks to be drafted, in my opinion. I mean, just absolute locks. All of these guys will be drafted. The 14 of them are Joey Bosa, Ezekiel Elliott, Taylor Decker, Eli Apple, Darren Lee, Michael Thomas, Von Bell, Adolphus Washington, Braxton Miller, Nick Vanette, Cardale Jones, Joshua Perry, Tyvis Powell, and Jalen Marshall. So not only are all 14 going to get drafted, a lot of those guys are going to be early-round picks, a lot of first-rounders, a lot of second-rounders, a handful of third- and fourth-rounders. There's going to be a few late-round picks as well. I think you know Josh Perry, Tyvis Powell, Jalen Marshall might be more late-round picks. Cardale Jones, I think probably more fourth-round for him. But the rest of those guys are going to be, you know, maybe Nick Van Nett will be fourth-round. We'll see. The rest of those guys are all going to be first- or second-day picks, either first, second, or third round. So really cool stuff here, Alex. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool and a really unique situation. You hate to see all this talent leave Columbus, especially. Uh, I, I, you know what? They won a national championship. It was probably a year earlier than most people thought they would. So if you flip-flop the seasons, <laughs> people probably wouldn't be complaining as much as they are, are right now. But, you know, it, they really could have had a shot at two straight national championships with all this talent. So that's the shame in it. But at the same time, it's really exciting. It's going to be a great re- recruiting tool for Mark Pantone, Urban Meyer, and the rest of the staff to use moving forward the most guys ever invited to an NFL combine. As you said, I expect all these guys to be drafted. It's going to be really interesting to see how, how a lot of them perform uh, at, at the combine, at pro days and various individual team workouts and things like that because guys like Braxton Miller and Nick Vanette and even Cardell Jones or, or even you know, a Darren Lee, a Jalen Marshall, uh, Joshua Perry, Tyvis Powell, uh, Michael Thomas even, I, I mean, their draft stocks are all over the board anywhere from first to you know, fifth round. So it's going to be interesting to see how these guys perform. But, you know, you really got to love the fact that there's a huge Ohio State presence, 14 guys. Alabama had nine. Notre Dame had ten. Uh, I think I saw um, a tweet out there, Charles Robinson. I think he said 14 is more than, like, Penn State, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Nebraska, and maybe Michigan State combined. So, I mean, total domination of the Big Ten, domination of the country. It's just really great to see if you're an Ohio State fan. In 2004, Ohio State set the modern-day record with 14 players drafted. So the Buckeyes will at least tie that this year. Now the question is, can they break their own school record? So that comes down to, will will any of the following get drafted? Chase Ferris, Tommy Shutt, Bryce Haynes, or Jacoby Boren. I tend to doubt it. Hopefully one of those guys is taken in the seventh round. That way the Buckeyes can break the record and have 15 players drafted. Do you think any of those four guys will get drafted, Alex? Well, I think you've got to take uh, Bryce Haynes and Jacoby Bourne out of the mix. I mean, long snappers are rarely drafted. And, and we're, you know, from actually one of our posters, is, and I think I actually had heard this before, is Bryce Haynes doesn't plan to pursue a career in football. He's going to go to medical school. Um, so that is another profession where you can make a lot of money. And, it, you know, from everything I gather, I haven't heard a word about Jacoby Bourne. He may not be pursuing a professional football career. I, I just don't know. Um, but I don't expect him to get drafted. Chase Barris, he's in the Senior Bowl, mixed reviews there. Um, I think guard is definitely his better position versus right tackle where he played for Ohio State. I could see him getting drafted maybe in the seventh round, but no earlier than that. So a team could take a flyer on a guy who – who kind of I would consider a raw offensive line prospect. I'll go with no right now on Chase Barris, but I think Tommy Shutt is a guy who could get a look sixth or seventh round. Um, you know, he's a starter at Ohio State, defensive tackle. Uh, injuries have been an issue, so that could, that could hurt him. But, you know, he's a tough kid. He's a, he's a good person off the field. And, you know, someone could say Ohio State starting defensive tackle, opportunity to take him in the seventh round where really there's no risk at all there. Uh, and Ohio State could break the record there, but I'm actually much more interested to see if they could break Miami's uh, modern-day record of, I think it was six first-round picks that same year in 2004. Um, so, uh, you know, that will, that's going to be the more interesting story to me is, is can Ohio State break that first-round record of six and get seven guys picked in the first round? How about they get seven first-round picks and 15 total? Let's break both records, see if uh, the Buckeyes can pull that off. Uh, last thing, heading into the weekend, what's the latest on the recruiting front? What's something interesting that fans should know heading into the weekend about recruiting? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a slow time of recruiting right after signing day. As you said, 11 guys in the 2017 class already with limited spots. So they're, they're taking things slow. They're going to really evaluate guys and be very selective. Uh, you know, probably wait for camp for a lot of people. But kind of just two things that are, are buzzworthy at the moment. Uh, you got running back Trey Sermon from Marietta, Georgia. He's visiting Ohio State on Monday. 
I wrote that story up uh, on Buck Nuts a couple of days ago, so check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, he's an outstanding uh, four-star back, uh, top 60 player in the country for the class of 2017. He got injured last year, so limited playing time. And, you know, last summer at one point it looked like Ohio State and him to really close to kind of making it official that, that Sermon was going to be a Buckeye. I think the injury um, kind of made Ohio State take a little step back and, and want to take their time a little bit more. Trey told me he's planning on taking all five official visits uh, before he makes his decision. But Ohio State is definitely a player, if not the leader in this one. Um, and I think they can land Trey if they want him, uh, you know, maybe even before those official visits happen. Uh, Florida, Oregon, Auburn, Tennessee, uh, and, and in-state Georgia are all schools that are right there as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that visit goes. We'll definitely have an update with Trey following his visit on Monday. And then the other thing I just really wanted to touch on, uh, an offer I think that, that's kind of been overlooked, Amir Reap from uh, uh, Col- uh, Coleraine was recently offered a couple of weeks back, and that kid is absolutely blowing up. At least one, if not two or three offers per day, some of the top programs in the country – This kid is the real deal. He could play corner or safety. He's blowing up. He's going to be a national prospect, but I think you got to look uh, for him to make a decision sometime this spring, maybe even around the time of the spring game, and I think it's going to be Ohio State. So that's something to get really excited about over the next couple of months. Great stuff, as always, out of Alex Gleidman. Thank you, Alex. I will have the latest installment in our position battle series on the site later today. Going to take a look at the one technique defensive tackle spot. Mike Hill seems like a safe bet to me to start there, but we'll take a deeper look at his game and look at the other players he will be competing with. So look for that on the site later today. Thanks again to Alex Kleitman for his wisdom, and thanks to you, the listener, for tuning into the show. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. Take away, best damn band in the land.